The Lord gave me these words back in September. And I just, I just, and I sat on it and I was like, ah, I want to preach it. I almost let it out. I think I did a few times. How many believe loved ones are coming home to Jesus? How many believe your family's going to get saved? You're going to get married this year. You're going to buy your first property this year. Come on, you're going to graduate this year. You're going to get breakthrough and healing this year. You're going to prosper this year. You're going to multiply this year. This is your year of harvest. Come on, shout like it's harvest time. So you're going to have, and, and say, why victory? Well, I don't know. The Lord gave me victory. But as I'm preaching it, I realize there's no harvest without a fight. I call them enemies of the harvest. We're going to be preaching along these lines. But how many know if we want to harvest what God has, we have to be good reapers. How many are ready to harvest abundant life? Amen. All right. So number one, I think I've done everything I'm supposed to do. So I'm ready to preach. Number one, it's time to reap the harvest of an abundant life. An abundant life. In Galatians 6, 7 through 9, in the Amplified Version, it says, Do not be deceived. Well, why does it say don't be deceived? Because how many know the devil is a deceiver? He's a liar. Amen. And he is the father of lies. And every time he opens his mouth, he's lying. You ever been around somebody who's a liar? And they're talking, and it's almost like you can hear it in your spirit. Liar. <laughs> how many know what I'm talking about? Liar. Sometimes it's loud. You're like, did you hear that? No, you're like, liar. <laughs> the devil's a liar. You don't want to be a liar. Do not be deceived, trick, dupe. Don't believe a lie. God, well, he's not mocked. He's not made fun of. He ain't nothing to, ma he ain't nothing to laugh at. For whatever a man sows, whatever a man gives, time, energy, whatever, this and this only is what he will reap. Why is God talking about reaping a harvest in 2024? Because somebody has been sowing your prayer, your love, your mercy, your finance, your time, your energy. But God says, I seen what you did, and I'm about to give you a harvest on what you did. But then there's a warning too. Help us, Lord. For those who sow, or, or for he who, or those who sows to his flesh, this is, and so you understand what it is, that's the sinful capacity. How many know we all have a, a capacity to sin? His worldliness, that's why we got to be careful that we're not, we're in, we're in the house of the Lord on tonight, not in the world. So when they get their harvest, you're not part of it. Because harvest in God's house is judgment in the enemy's house. And his disgraceful impulses. So these are the things we can't sow to. Because if you sow to these things, you're going to reap from the flesh ruin and then destruction. But, say but. but. The one who sows to the spirit, prayer, the word, the things of God. Those who sows to the spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. So, so all that sowing to the Spirit you've done, you're about to reap eternal life. That means all the prayer, all the confession, all the giving, all the energy, all the love, everything you've given... God says, 2024, get ready to reap that harvest. You say, eternal life, Pastor, you mean like going to heaven? No, eternal life is not just going to heaven. That's just one part of it. It's the most important part, obviously. I mean, we all want to get to heaven one day. Amen. Of course, but heaven's a long way. And for some of us, it's longer than others. Right? It's not a, I mean, no, we're not to be afraid to die. I remember when COVID came and everyone was afraid to die. And I'm like, why is everybody afraid to die? The day you die is going to be the best day of your life. <laughs> what do you mean? The fear of death is gone. Death has no power no more. When you leave that body, and I leave this body, I'm with the Lord. When there's no more crying, there's no more pain, there's no more tear. There's no more sleepless nights. There's no more aches. There's no more haters. 
There's no more. <laughs> There's no more fear. There's nothing. It's blessed. Streets of gold. Glory of the Lord. Angels of God. Chilling with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Heaven's awesome. But this is not just talking about heaven. This is talking about, uh, this is talking about a lifestyle of eternal life. The God kind of life. Zoe life. It literally means the God kind of life. So if you sow in the spirit, you're going to reap not only forever, but now the God kind of life. And then new, the New Living Translation, verse 9 says, So let's not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. 2024, throughout the year, per periodically, it's going to be just the right time, 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 just the right time. And it's going to go bam, 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 bam. And God's going to release that eternal life, that abundant life. I looked up the word for abundant life, or the word abundant, the word life means the God kind of life. I looked up the word for abundance. It means perisos. It means this is what God wants to do. This is the kind of life he wants to move us into in 2024. A life of super abundance. How many would like God to give you some super abundance? Supre. Man, by the way, Spanish church is exploding right now. Come on, they're getting ready. To, our Spanish church is getting ready to get their own, our own freedom in Espanol building. Amen. What a blessing. Super abundance. God says 2024, get ready for the excessive. Get ready for the overflowing. Get ready for the surplus. Get ready for the over and the above. Get ready for the more than enough. It's going to be extraordinary, above the ordinary kind of year. Who's ready for above the ordinary, extraordinary, super abundant, more than enough, excessive, overflowing, surplus, over and above? The thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy, but I've come in 2024 to give you life, Zoe, and life more abundant. Somebody ought to shout like we're going to come into abundant life. In what areas, Pastor? I'm believing in every area. According to John 3, 2, and it's been in my spirit. It says, Beloved, I wish and pray above all things that you may prosper and be in health as your soul prospers. It's not just material wealth here. There's things that money can't buy. What about emotional health? What about living an, an abundant life in your emotion where you're not struggling with loneliness and depression and anxiety and addiction and fear and worry and phobia, but you're free from that. And peace is in abundance. Joy is in abundance. Happiness is in abundance. There's abundance of favor and blessing on your marriage, on your future marriage, on your children. Somebody ought to give God praise like the abundant life has come into your life. I believe it's a year of supernatural harvest. It's the year of the harvest. So number, uh, this is, I believe, one of the ways we're gonna, we have to get a hold of this. And this is, I believe, a prophetic word Really, this is, I think it's going to answer a lot of questions. And number two is we must, we must, we must not get weary in well-doing. So we must resist Satan's temptations to let go. Let go of what? To let go of our faith, to let go of our prayer life. It's harvest and victory time, and the enemy knows it. And so just like God has kairos time or is a set time of blessing and a set time for victory and a set time for harvest, you know that the enemy is going to try to rise up against God because that's what he does. When God wants to do something over here and heal, he brings sickness. When God wants to bring provision, he brings lack. When God wants to bring faith, he brings fear. When God brings joy, he brings oppression. So the enemy is He's a, he's, a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a counter of God. So if God's going to bring harvest and victory, then the enemy is going to try to bring lack of harvest and defeat. But the devil is a liar. And the enemy has a strategy on how to do it. And we're going to unpack his strategy. And I believe it's going to bring answers to you, not just for today, but for the whole year. This is a word from God. Galatians chapter 6 verse 9 in the New Living Translation says, So let's not get tired of doing what is good. Why would the Bible say that? Because there's a temptation straight from hell to back off of doing good. 
I'm not going to stop doing good. I'm going to do good, and I'm going to do it even more because as I sow to the Spirit, I'm going to reap eternal life. I'm going to reap abundant life. The minute the enemy can get you tired of doing good, he's got your future harvest because your future harvest is determined by your today's good. You keep doing today good. You do tomorrow good. You do the next day good, and you keep sowing good, and your life is going to be a good life, and you're going to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Somebody clap it like if you sow good, you're going to get good. Doing good in my lifestyle, doing good in my holiness, doing good in my prayer, doing good with my family, doing good in my marriage, doing good, doing good, doing good, doing good. I'm doing it God's way, God's method, God's strategy. I'm seeking first the kingdom of God in every aspect, every arena, every area of my life, and I'm not going to get tired of doing good. I'm going to keep sowing, and I'm going to keep sowing, and I'm going to keep sowing, and I'm going to give love, and I'm going to give mercy, and I'm going to give resource, and I'm going to give time, and I'm going to give energy. I'm going to keep sowing, and I'm going to sow, and I'm going to sow, and I'm going to sow, and I'm going to and at just the right time, I will reap a harvest of blessing if I don't give up. You see, those who quit never receive. Why do people quit doing good? Quit serving God. They lose their fire. What, what happens? It's the enemy trying to take their future. Because your future is not determined by God alone. Remember the scripture, this and this only will he reap. A man's future is not just determined by God. God has set the boundaries of your future. He set the parameters of your blessing. But God needs your sowing and your agreement to produce the harvest in your future. If you're going to clap, clap like you believe you're ready for a harvest. It says don't give up. Don't give. And I looked up the word to give up. It's an interesting word. It means to loose. It means to unloose. It means like a bowstring. You ever, you ever, you ever had a, seen a, a bow and arrow? And if you've ever shot a bow and arrow, you, 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 it's, it's pretty strong. And you pull it, and when you pull it, there's like a tension, and you're holding it, right? And you want to pull, 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 and then it gets like really hard, actually. And then you let it go, and once you let it go, the arrow goes. Well, the scripture says when you pull, right, that's what happens in the spirit world. You're pulling, and your faith is pulling. Your prayer life is pulling. Your holiness is pulling. Your lifestyle is pulling, and, you're, and that's that goodness, and you're pulling. And the Bible says the enemy wants you to let it go, but don't let it go. You keep pulling. You keep doing good. You keep, don't relax your hold on the promises of God. Don't relax your hold on a lifestyle of prayer. Don't relax your hold on the things of God. Don't relax your hold on saving souls and making disciples. Don't relax your hold on parenting your children God's way. Don't relax your hold on sowing into your marriage. Come on, somebody ought to shout like we're not going to relax our hold. Because whatever you sow good into, you and I are going to reap from. So I spend time with my children. I want to reap a harvest. I spend time with my wife. I want to reap a harvest. I spend time on leadership development. I need a harvest. I spend time on God-given wisdom and ideas because I want to reap a harvest. I got to spend whatever I sow good into, I'm going to reap good there. 2024, I decree and declare Freedom City Church, you're going to be wise and professional reapers. You're going to do good, and you're not going to let the enemy rob you of it. Say, do good. Do good. <laughs> Don't let the enemy rob you of that. Are you ready for more? Yeah. When you're going to step into a, and I want to preach this, enemies of harvest and how to reap harvest, but, you know, when you're going to, when you're going to, you got to, you got to start out with a goal. What's the goal for the marriage? What's the goal for the family? What's the goal for the company? What's the goal for the career? What's the goal for your leadership, for the kingdom of God? What's your goal? I've been looking at, a, I get a lot of photos from a lot of the groups, and they have, mainly the women. Guys, you got to step up here. But a lot of the women have these vision boards, real nice vision boards, you know. And I think, I have my own vision board. I do it every year. I've been doing it for years. What's my goal? And I, like, I have my vision board in my, one of, both my offices, and, and every time I go in the office, I look at it. Sometimes I'll stare at it and say, okay, where are we out there? Where are we out there? Because you got to be going somewhere. you got to have a vision. The, 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 the healing place was on my vision. The women's was on the vision. Everything was, that we're doing now was on the vision. 
And I wrote it because you have to have the vision. Without the vision, you know, you don't know where you're going. You don't know if you hit the harvest. You got to have a vision. And then you got to pray and go ask the Holy Spirit, give me a vision. Not some crazy vision, not some abnormal vision like, oh, Lord, I want to be a millionaire next year. Like, bro, you got to just, you know, get, go to school, graduate. <laughs> you know, get your, get your N.A., get your R.N.A., get, you know, do, just do little, do, you know, whatever. <laughs> Amen. I'm going to be like a trillionaire. It's like, brother. I know the Lord told you, but it's like 20 years from now. What are you going to do today? You're going to get a job. You know what I mean? Keep your job. Make that the vision. Keep your job, brother. Because a lot of people want to get real spiritual here, but God is, God's not the reaper. You're the reaper. Oh, see, maybe I should talk about more leadership stuff, huh? not, not to you. This is leadership. Yeah, then, and then once you get a vision, you know, then, then you got to get promises. You got to have faith. And you got to decree it. You got to declare it. You got to frame it. And then once you, once you got it, then whatever your hands find to do, work it. Work a marriage. Work the parenting. Work that job. Work. Roll those sleeves up and do it as unto God. Work hard. I work hard for my money. Come on, I gotta work hard. Everyone wants to be. Everyone wants to be blessed. I want a blessed marriage. You don't spend no time with her. I'm believing for the greatest marriage. You don't even. You don't even spend time with them. Uh oh. I want, I'm believing God to get married this year. Well, are you working out? Are you? Are you working on yourself? Are you? Are you dealing with these issues? No, I'm just, you know, I'm, 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 the way I am, well, that, that might not work. <laughs> right? I want, I want to prosper this year. Okay, well, how can you advance at your company? You know, what can you do? Can you get a little promotion, a little raise? I mean, a little class here and there, get some certificates, come up a little bit? Work it. Every time I had a job, I always say, okay, how can I advance here? I was never ungrateful, but how can I advance here? And I always advance at every company. I always advance. Sometimes I advance out to another company that took me higher. But either way, I was, I was coming up. Huh. You got to have a mentality. I always tell people, once you get a job, be grateful, but then start applying to other jobs. Believe God for that job that you don't qualify for. And get qualified. Come on. You want to harvest in that area, then you got you to sow. You got to work hard. You got a generation that don't want to work. They want to be blessed. They don't want to work. Amen. And then you got to wait on God's time. And there's a timing. There's a time period where you sow and then you wait and then you reap. Sometimes it's I sow and then I wait. I said, Lord, I'm going to get me a wife. Lord, I'm believing for a wife. Praise the Lord. And a year went by. Hallelujah. Two years. Praise God. Four years. Oh, oh, hallelujah. Yeah, five years. Oh, Lord, are you still there? Come on, somebody. <laughs> and then there's six years, and then the seven years of tribulation. But on the eighth year, the glory of <laughs> See, a lot of people, I got to teach you how to be a good reaper. Amen. Amen. So you got you to learn about parenting. You got to learn about being a husband and a wife. You got to learn about... In whatever area you want to reap in, you got to study, you got to get in the books, you got to watch good stuff and feed yourself and learn how to be excellent so you can reap that harvest this year. It's getting quiet, huh? There's somebody like, oh Lord, bless me. And he's like, go get a job. He's like, oh, the devil's a liar. A J O B. It's in the book of Job. It's funny to me, people are like, oh, Lord, the Lord's called me to business. The Lord's called me to business. Really? Yeah, yeah, business. Okay, okay. How long have you been in your company? Oh, like, how many jobs have you had? Like 32 jobs? Brother, I don't think you're a businessman. I think you need to get a job and be faithful and provide for your family because he doesn't take care of his family. It's worse than an infidel. You work at Home Depot. You work on the corner. You do what you got to do. Come on, some. Oh. You got to work, brother. You got to work hard. Well, I don't want to do this demeaning job. What do you mean, no job? You better do what you got to do, brother. Praise the Lord. 
Uh, th this ain't in my notes. Okay, let, let, let's go deeper. I'm going to talk about the spiritual part of it. Because that's what everyone wants to know. That's the most important part. Amen? Amen? All right. Okay. All right. Okay. What's the time coming? Say, harvest time. Harvest time. Tell somebody you love next to you, it's harvest time. Tell them, it's good harvest time, not bad. Because you know, no, you know, in Jesus' name, no bad harvest. You know, I curse that harvest, amen. It's harvest time. It's victory time, right? Who, who's believing in God for that? All right? But so if God has a set time, a kairos of harvest, and he's saying prophetically, this is going to be the year of harvest and victory, and that's what the Lord is saying, what do you think the enemy is going to try to do? He's going he's gonna to recognize this. This is my opportunity to make sure that doesn't happen. And that's what happened to Jesus Christ when he was fighting Satan in the wilderness and, and he began to battle Satan and, and Satan attacked him. And what, how did he win? He said, he said he fought Satan with the what? And it is written. And Satan came at him with all these temptations. He came at him with, with, with the capacity of sin. He came at him to sow to his sin. He came at him to, for, to, to be worldly, uh, to, to follow his fleshly impulses. He attacked Jesus. And so he attacked him. But Jesus beat him how? With what? It is written. With the word. He didn't let go. He kept declaring and declaring and declaring. And the Bible says that Satan got wore out. He wore Satan out. And Satan, because he's a, he's a dead spirit, he's not like God. God doesn't wear out. God doesn't sleep. That's why you can go to sleep good at night. God doesn't slumber. God doesn't get tired. But the devil does. And so the devil's attacking Jesus, and Jesus is like, bam, bam, jab, 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 bam, 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 bam. And then finally the devil like, I'm out, I'm out. And literally says, the devil, the devil said this to himself, I'll come back at another opportune time. That's how he works. And that's why we ought to be very... We got to be, we got to be on guard all the time. In Daniel 7, 25, we look at the strategy of Satan. This is powerful because the strategy here in Daniel 7, 25 is Satan will speak against the most high and wear down the saints of the, whole, of the, high, the most high or the holy one or the highest one. So how does Satan wear down the people? If, if the Bible said don't get tired in well-doing, then how do you get tired? Well, Satan comes speaking against the most high in our lives. That's why we can't let go of faith. Faith has to stay high. Faith for your finance, faith for your health, faith for your children, faith for your marriage, faith for your future marriage, faith for your career, faith for your company, faith for your leadership, faith, come on, somebody ought to shout like we have faith. You gotta identify how faith comes and be environments and around people that bring faith and get around, get out of environments that steal your faith. Get away from people who steal your faith. Get away from environments who steal faith because you understand the battle is for faith because the enemy wants to wear us out by speaking against the most high. God's not gonna heal. God's not gonna fix your body. God's not gonna bless your finances. God's not gonna give you a good children. God's not, God's not. The devil is a liar. Matter of fact, this is the word. God says, I'm gonna restore everything the enemy stole and the enemy says, no, you ain't. The devil is a liar. Don't let him wear you out. I, I looked up this word, wear down, and, and I looked up this word, wear down, and I, and I categorized it under one of Satan's strategies, and it literally means this is, this is how you know Satan is after your faith. He sends persecution, or it literally means he persecutes them, or, oh God, or he maintains war against them. See, so it's not just war, but this is a, spe a, a special strategy to wear down the early church, the Philippian church, because they were such a successful church. They were such a thriving church. Satan is like, I got to wear them down. Now, a devil can't just sit there and fight you all day. He gets tired. So Satan has ranks of devils. One rank will come through. They get tired. They step back. Another rank will come in. And that's why it feels like the war never ends, because it's not ending, because Satan is sending legion after legion after legion to wear down the saints it literally means to afflict or to strike repeatedly and when there's breakthroughs coming when there's miracles happening then that's a spotlight in the spirit where Satan decides I'm gonna attack there because that's where God is manifesting heavy glory 
That's why it's true, Sergio. You said, why when there's revival, there's always failure and falls because that's where the warfare is. But you got to recognize you don't, you don't get just breakthrough. You got to go through battle. And you get battle fatigued. Oh, I feel like preaching a little bit today. Elbow somebody say, you ain't getting battle fatigue this year. No, inwardly, we are not getting weaker. We are getting stronger and stronger no matter what comes our way. You see, Freedom City Church, we're not going to get worn out in 2024. No, no, no. We're going to wear that devil out. I said, we're going to wear that joker out. And when he's wore out, you can go in and take back what he stole. You got to wear that joker out. How do you wear them out, pastor? How do you wear them out? Well, Isaiah 40, 29, 31 tells us exactly how. He gives strength to the weary. So if you're weary, God gives strength. He increases power to the weak. So if you're weak, God gives you power. Watch me. Even youth, youth, youth will become weak and tired. And young men will fall into exhaustion. Oh, so how many remember when you were like 16? Some of you are like, I am 16, Pastor. I know, I know, but I'm not talking, the, okay, praise God. I remember when I was in my 20s, man, I mean, when I was going to, I would work eight hours, eight hours a day, sometimes 10. Then, I, then I'd go to school at night, and then I'd, and I'd pray, and I wouldn't go to bed till 1, 2 in the morning, wake up at 5, 6, pray again, go back to work. I did that for like 10 years. I was a young man. I'm still a young, come on somebody, right? But then you can get, it doesn't matter how young you are, the Bible says even in your youth can get tired. And then it says not only you're tired, but you fall into exhaustion. Why did, why did people fall in 2023? So many people fell, they fell into sin, they backslid, they went back to their old ways, it's because they let up spiritually. They were in a battle, they got battle fatigued, they got weaker and weaker, and then Satan kept hitting them, and he got them offended. He got them to quit. Now all of a sudden, they're back in depression. They're back in addiction. They're back sleeping around. They're back messing around. They're back cussing and tripping like they used to. What happened? They were in a battle, and they didn't recognize it. They were in a battle, and they didn't recognize it. They were getting hit repeatedly. They thought it was normal, but it wasn't. They were in a battle because Satan was fighting that harvest. But this year, you're going to recognize, no, I'm in a battle, and I'm not going to put my fist down. I'm not putting my gloves down. I'm not put, I'm going to be in this. Come on. Somebody ought to help me preach. I'm prophesying right now. Oh, glory to God. So even the young men will fall. But tell your neighbor, you ain't falling. You ain't quitting. You ain't throwing in the towel. You ain't backing down. You're going to wear that devil out. Not with your own power. But my Bible says, those who wait, those who trust, those who rely on the Lord and in the Lord will renew their strength. Come on. They will mount up. I said they will mount up with wings like eagles. They will run and not get weary. They will run and not grow tired. They will walk and not faint. I, 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 it says, I, like, I like it where it said, grow weary. Because you don't just get weary overnight. You grow weary. You let up on doing good. You stop going to small group. You stop spending time in the Word. You stop devoting time in the prayer closet. You start letting up those things. And little by little, you're getting hit. You're getting hit. And see, every time you get hit, it drains spiritual energy. Every time you get hit, it drains spiritual life. You see, I'm looking at you. You're looking at me. But this is not the real us. The real us, you cannot see. The real us is our spirit man. And that's the one I'm talking about. Because if your spirit is weak, then you'll give up. If your spirit is weak and temptation comes, you'll go back to the old ways. But the devil's a liar. This year, you're going to get strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. You're going to wear that devil out this year. Somebody ought to shout like it's harvest time. Glory to God. Glory to God. Let's stand on our feet because if not, I won't close. It's going to help me to close. Please. 
increase. Say, wear that devil out. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Like a good boxer. See, a good boxer knows how to fight. You, I, I, see, I love boxing. Boxeo. Come on, I love boxing. I love UFC too. But I like good boxing, like 12 round championship fights. And I like to see a fighter win that no one thought was going to win. The other day, they had these fights for like nine hours. And, and one boxer they thought was going to lose, but he won. But he fought the perfect fight, they said. And what he did, it was so brilliant. He just jabbed the body, and he, and he went to the body of this better fighter, more talented, more skilled. It was quicker. He was better. But this, this, this other boxer just went to the body, jab, right hook to body, six rounds for the body. The other fighter looked like he was winning, but the other fighter just stuck to his game plan. Body, 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 body. But by the, by the sixth round, that better fighter, his hands went down a little bit. And now he's vulnerable. Now the guy's going to the body. Now he's clipping him on the chin. Ba ba ba. Bam. Now the guy's. You see it in his eyes. He's starting to get nervous because he's realized, uh oh, I've been beat up right now. And by the ninth, tenth round, it's over. Fight's over. Guy's hands are down. Guy's clocking him. The guy's that's not as good as him is beating him. Why? Because he had a strategy. He had a scheme. He knew exactly what he was doing. And that's the same way with Satan. He goes to us like that. But we can do the same thing to him. We can go to the body in prayer. We can go to the body in the Word. We can go to the body spending time with our children. Go to the body loving our wives. Come on, go in the body. Come on, going back to college. Go in our body. Because we're, we're trying to get a harvest. Go in the body with the Word. Go in the body. Go in the body. Go in the body. Go in the body. Come on, come on. Keep hitting them. Hitting them. Let that devil's hands drop. Wear that joker up. Bam, 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 bam. Fire him up. Drop him. Boom. Give me my family. Give me my money. Give me my marriage. Come on, somebody ought to shout. Like you're going to go to the body. You're going to wear that joker out. All right, I got to move. I told this mess, this story in the early service. I'm gonna tell it again. I'm gonna t well, maybe I'll wait. Either way, yeah. Hmm. See, let me say it this way. Stop looking down on yourself. Stop looking at yourself through the eyes of your failure, and through the eyes of what you have around you. You're a faith man. You're a faith woman. You gotta, you gotta see through the eyes of faith. Oh, my, I feel the anointing so strong. That's what the enemy wants. He wants you looking at all this. With this. That's why Paul said, I'm forgetting what's behind. I'm not, I'm not looking back there. No, no, no. I'm focused on what's ahead. I've got my eyes on the Lord. And I'm going to focus on, and I'm not going to I'm not, I'm not let up my faith. I'm not going to let up my prayer life. I'm not going to let up doing good. I'm going to get stronger and stronger and stronger. Like Rocky Balboa. You're not going to get weaker in January and weaker in February. And we know you're going to start off. We're going to start off praying. We're going to start off fasting. But by February, you're going to be strong. March, stronger. April, man, you're like, by May, you'll be like, shut up. Come on, somebody. June, July, you're going to be bringing it in. Come on, some of you going to be bringing offerings to the altar like, bam, bam. Come on, some of you going to walk down an aisle. Some of you going to sign the paper. Some, come on, somebody ought to clap. August, September is going to be the best year you've ever had. November, December, you're going to rejoice and thank God for all the good he's done in that year. Why? Because you're not going to let up. You're not going to back down. You're not going to let the devil wear you out. You're going to be smarter. Tell your neighbor you're going to be smarter this year. Come on, tell your neighbor you're going to be much, much wiser and smarter this year. And always after a spiritual high, there's a spiritual low. That's why they tell pastors, Monday, you told me, Serge, you told me this years ago. Years ago, you said, Jason, never believe on Monday what you believe for on Sunday. Because Monday, your spirit's weak. I gave everything out. So Monday, your faith is not where it needs to be. So I don't listen to anything on Monday. No, I sit in my prayer room, and I put the word on, and I build myself up. Why? Because I'm in a battle. Come on, and I'm, I know I'm being afflicted by the enemy, and he's shooting fiery darts, but I'm not going to let those fiery darts get through my shield of faith. I'm going to keep my faith up high on Monday, faith up high on Tuesday, faith, and I'm not going to allow distractions in. I'm not, I, I love you, but you ain't distracting me. I want to call you, but you ain't distracting me. I want to spend time, but you ain't distracting me, because I got time with the Lord. This is where I get built up. This is where I get strong. This is where I take down my enemy. This is where I get strategy. This is where I get vision. This is where I get dreams. This is where I get influence. This is where I get open doors. Somebody give God praise like you're going to go in the spirit in 2024. You want harvest? You want harvest? You got to take it. You got to take it in the spirit. You want to harvest in your family? Take it. 
You want to harvest in any arena? Take it. You don't take it by might. You don't take it by force. It is not by might. It is not by power. But it is by the Spirit of the Lord. Unless the Lord builds the house. Unless the Lord builds the family. Unless the Lord builds the marriage. Unless the Lord builds the church. Come on, somebody. But if the Lord builds it through your obedience, through your spirit, through your faith, if the Lord builds the house, I'll tell you right now, there's no gates of hell that can stop the house that our God builds. I decree and declare God's building your health. God's building your wealth. God's building your family. Be strong in the Lord, Joshua. Jesus was telling his disciples a parable to make the point. He said, at all times, at all times, that means locked in, all times, at all times, they ought to pray. When should I pray, pastor? All the time. A spirit of prayer. In the morning when you wake up, you separate time before the Lord. Before you call everybody, anybody, you, you spend time with the Lord. You leave your cell phone there and you pray somebody. Don't, let, don't answer no call. Don't answer no text. No, it's the Lord's time. Come on, somebody. Whether that's 30 minutes, an hour, no. And then all day, turn that crap off the TV. Turn the stuff off the radio. Put the Word of God on. Build yourself. Men ought to pray with always. What? If you ought to pray always, then you will never give up, and you will never get discouraged, and you will never stay depressed. You may get knocked down for a day, but you'll be back up the next day because the mercies of the Lord are new every morning. Yeah. I got, a, I got a prophetic word. This is where last year people, we saw people all, all over the world fall, fall. Here at Freedom, we've seen people fall, backslide. Why? Spiritual height, then the enemy comes in. That's why night of terror, I kept telling people, pray, stay prayed up, stay prayed up, stay prayed up. And they, oh yeah, pastor. I said, man, you act like this is my first rodeo. I've been doing this 30 years. Every time you have a spiritual breakthrough, you get a new building, you get, the enemies were, because it takes your spirit to take things. You have to give your spirit to things. You don't just get good family, you have to give your spirit to it. You don't just have good marriage, you don't just have a good future, you gotta give your spirit. And every time you give your spirit, every time you good, do good, you're giving out. But if you're giving and giving and you're not replenishing, now you're vulnerable. You know, trying to be a, trying to be a husband and your spirit's weak. So where's your escape? You're trying to be a wife and your spirit's weak. Where's your escape? And this is where the enemy comes with his old ways. So you sow to the flesh and reap a whirlwind of destruction. I break that curse off your life. I break that cycle of your life. You're not going to worship Baal. You're not going to worship idols. You're not going to worship the golden calf. You're going to let the dead bury the dead. You're going to cut that joker loose. You're going to go after God and you're going to watch the goodness of God hit your life. Somebody ought to... I'm in the spirit, man. Somebody give God a shout. The power of God's here. November, I was sitting right there in the prayer and worship night, and the Holy Spirit spoke to me. I don't just do things to do things because everybody does things. Some, like right now, many times in churches all over the world, which is great, they do a 21-day fast or prayer and everything. That's fine, but I don't do that kind of stuff. I, I got to be led. The reason I got to be led is because I know every time you do something, you got you to have a word from God. Because if I don't have a word from God and you step out and try to do something and you're halfway out there and you ain't got a word, now, and now the enemy attacks you, you got no confidence. Then you're confused. You're lost, wondering. No, I got to make sure I'm hearing the Holy Spirit. But I sat right there and the Holy Spirit said, do a five-day prayer and fasting to start the year off. Why? Because I believe God wants to get our spirits right. Some of you have neglected your salvation. You've neglected your spirit. You feed your body, you work out every day, but your spirit's all mangled up. You look all cracked out in the spirit. Yeah, in the natural, you look pretty, you look nice to everybody, you look handsome, but your spirit's all sucked up. You're saved, sure you are. You speak in tongues, but, you, but your spirit's dried up. And you're about to throw in the towel. You're about to give back into to temptation. You're about to do something dumb. You're about to hook up with somebody you should have never hooked up with because of fear of being alone because of fear of this and fear of that. No, you're gonna be in the spirit this year. We're gonna start it right. You're gonna have an eagle eye. You're gonna know the will of God. You're gonna know the confusion. I break it off you. Unbelief, I break it off you. Doubt, I break it off. All that spirit of confusion, I command that to go. I, I, like, I better close, huh? I call it
like clearing the atmosphere, clearing the air. Everything's foggy. You got to clear the air. You got to be able to see exactly what the Holy Spirit is saying. That don't happen like that. That happens over time. Spending time with the Lord. Spending time in His presence. Not just one day, but day after day after day. And getting very, very clear, precise. Then write down the vision. Make it plain. So he that reads it can run with it. For the vision is for an appointed time. In the end, it's going to talk back to you. And it will speak and it will not lie. Because God cannot be mocked. Whatever a man sows, that man will reap. 2024, we're not going to lose heart. Though our outward man wastes away. The scripture says that our outward man, our body is wasting away. So we, I'm 49, 48, 49 whatever yeah my body's changing of course I'm getting older that's right by faith but it says here it says here don't be moved by your body don't be moved by the outside no no we fix our eyes not on what is seen we're not focused on the problem we're not focused on the warfare we're not focused on the persecution we're not a focus on the affliction. We're not focused on the no, 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 no. We fix our eyes on what is seen, but what is, not on what is seen, but what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. What is he saying? Don't focus on the temporal. Don't focus on what it looks like. And that's what happens. Satan wants to attack and attack and attack and attack and get us all bogged down with the cares of this life and the worry and wear our spirit and wear our spirit and we drag it in. We're dragging in the church. We're dragging in the family. We're barely making it. The devil's a liar. That is a generational curse and that must be broken. You're going to get on fire for God and not just get on fire. You're going to stay on fire. I said you're going to stay on fire. You're going to have the ego. I'm Lift your hands to the Lord and say, Lord. Feel this in my spirit. Say, Lord. Forgive me for neglecting my spirit. I'm made in your image. I'm a new creation. I'm a giant killer. Lord, and you've made me strong. But I've neglected my spirit. I renounce the sin of prayerlessness I dedicate afresh to spend time with you every morning and every day like Jesus said I'm gonna pray at all times I'm gonna walk in the spirit and I'm not gonna fulfill the lust of my flesh and I renounce all forms of bondage in my life every form of bondage every fear every sin all anxiousness all perverseness all depression all fear all lack fear of running out fear of not enough fear of failing fear of rejection fear of man fear of success i renounce this out of my life fear you leave me now fear of being alone you leave me now fear of failing in destiny you leave me now I renounce you in Jesus name and today I forget what's behind me and I reach forward toward what's ahead there's destiny at this altar right now I don't know who you are but there's somebody in this room God says if you get out of your chair and you come to the front repentant I'm going to re reinfuse you with destiny. I'm going to put destiny, unlock that. Some of you, 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 you let your dreams die. You've let your vision die. You've let your hope die. But God says, I'm going to restore your vision. I'm going to restore your dreams. I'm going to restore your happiness on my altar today. Come on, everybody, worship the Lord. Forget about everybody.
up now for the battle you're going to need this every day just like this we repent Lord for trying to do it on our own unless you abide in me and my words abide in you you can do nothing forgive us trying to do it on our own marriage on our own raising children on our own trying to be healthy on our own trying to trying to prosper on our own trying to be a leader for you on our own I'm sorry Lord I won't do it this year I repent of this pride go ahead repent of that pride if you try to do it on your own just repent he hears it's okay I repent of this pride the enemy shot pride into my heart Lord and I try to do it on my own but this year I'm gonna do it with you with your help with your power with your angels with your grace with your supernatural favor I'm gonna have the best marriage I've ever had I'm gonna marry the right one my children are gonna walk in favor and integrity my family my marriage my finance my body this is going to be the year 2024! 